Here's a truth most beginner bakers don't hear enough. Your dough doesn't own a clock. Recipes might say let rise for one hour, but that's just a starting point, not a guarantee. Your dough might be ready in 45 minutes. Or it might need two hours. It depends on temperature, flour, hydration, and even the mood of your yeast. If you treat time as a hard rule, you'll get inconsistent results. You'll underproof one batch and overproof the next, and you won't know why. But when you start looking at what the dough is doing, not just what the clock says, that's when things click. Fermentation isn't about counting minutes. It's about understanding what's changing in your dough and learning to spot the signs of readiness. And that's what this video is going to teach you. So what is fermentation exactly? During fermentation, yeast eats the natural sugars in the dough and produces gas, specifically carbon dioxide. That gas gets trapped by the gluten network, which stretches and expands. This is what makes your dough rise. But rising is just part of the story. Fermentation also affects texture and flavor. As time passes, your dough becomes more complex, both structurally and taste-wise. Wild yeast and bacteria in sourdough, for example, produce acids and alcohols that shape the final flavor. So when we talk about dough being ready, we're not just talking about volume, we're talking about the development happening inside. Dough can look puffy but still be under-fermented, or it can double in size and be over-fermented, too soft and weak to hold shape. This is why watching the clock isn't enough. You have to watch the dough. Most recipes will tell you your dough is ready when it doubles in size. That's a helpful cue, but it's not the full picture. A dough that's risen quickly in warm conditions might double but still be underdeveloped. And a sourdough fermented slowly in a cool kitchen might look sluggish but be perfectly ready. The question isn't, has it doubled? The question is, does it have the structure to move on to the next stage? Can it hold a shape? Does it jiggle slightly when you move the bowl? Does it feel airy when you press it gently? A lot of baking frustration comes from expecting fermentation to follow a fixed path, but dough has its own timing. Learning to read it takes practice, but once you start, your baking becomes way more consistent. One of the easiest ways to track fermentation is just to look at your dough. As it ferments, it becomes puffier. The surface smooths out and stretches. You may start to see tiny bubbles just under the skin of the dough. These are good signs. Give the bowl a gentle shake. If it wobbles like a jelly, that's a sign it's gassy and holding structure. But be careful. Not all rise is the same. A dough that's risen too fast might puff up, then collapse at the center. That's a sign it's gone too far. Your eyes are your first tool. Look for signs of expansion, evenness, and strength, not just size. Next up, touch. Fermentation is a physical process and you can feel it. Try the press test. Lightly press the dough with your finger. If it springs back slowly, not immediately, it's well fermented. If it deflates or collapses under pressure, it's likely overproofed. If it bounces back too fast, it's still tight and underdeveloped. You can also feel the airiness. A dough that's ready will feel inflated, not heavy or tight. And if you stretch a small piece gently, it should feel elastic and smooth, not dry or resistant. This kind of feedback can't be written into a recipe. You learn it by feeling it over time, but it starts with one touch. Temperature is the quiet force behind every rise. Warm dough ferments faster. Cool dough takes longer. The difference can be huge. What takes 45 minutes at 27 degrees Celsius might take 90 minutes at 21 degrees Celsius. But here's the twist. Slower fermentation often leads to better flavor and structure. That's why many bakers prefer long, cool ferments, like putting dough in the fridge overnight. 
If your kitchen is very warm, your dough may race ahead and overproof if you're not watching. If it's cold, you might think your dough is failing when it's just taking its time. This is why you can't trust time alone. Even the best recipe doesn't know your room temperature. If you want to understand fermentation, you need to know what speeds it up and what slows it down. Things that speed up fermentation include warmth, more yeast, and wetter doughs. If your recipe is high hydration and your kitchen is warm, don't be surprised if it rises fast. Things that slow down fermentation include cooler temperatures, less yeast, and doughs with a lot of salt or stiff structure. If you're using a sourdough starter, it naturally takes longer because the yeast is less concentrated. This knowledge helps you stay in control. You're not stuck with whatever time the recipe says. You can adjust based on what's happening in your kitchen. Let's say your dough looks ready, but the timer says it has 30 minutes to go. What do you do? You trust your dough. If it's puffed up, full of bubbles, and feels light, move on. If it's not moving fast enough, but your kitchen is cold, give it more time. Or warm it up slightly by placing it in a slightly warmer spot, like inside an off oven with the light on. The goal isn't to force the dough to follow a schedule. It's to help the dough do its thing and adjust your timing around that. Once you get comfortable with this kind of adjustment, baking becomes a lot less stressful and a lot more fun. People talk about baker's instinct like it's magic. It's not. Baker's instinct is just experience, plus pattern recognition, and a little bit of trust. You make dough enough times, you start to notice patterns. How it looks. How it feels. How it reacts in different weather. You stop needing the timer. You stop second guessing. You start adjusting things naturally without fear. And here's the good news. This instinct builds faster than you think. You don't need years. You just need attention. Every time you check your dough, you're learning. Every bake gets you closer. To wrap up, stop baking by the clock. Start baking by the dough. Time is helpful, but it's only one part of the picture. What matters is how the dough looks, feels, and behaves. Use your eyes, use your hands, use your judgment. Once you start doing that, your baking becomes more flexible, more consistent, and more enjoyable. Because you're not just following instructions. End of lesson. As always, I hope this helps someone. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. I will respond as soon as I'm available to.